In this video, we're going to have a look at how planes are defined in three dimensions. So first of all, a bit of a demonstration. We're going to use autograph for this demonstration. So a plane is a flat surface in three dimensions, just like this one here. So I see if I can rotate this graph around there, I can see a flat surface there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about this plane. I'm going to tell you its equation. So I'm going to tell you that the equation of this plane is R, any point on the plane, R just means X, Y, Z, equals 1, 1, 1, plus lambda, 1, 0, 0, plus mu, 0, 1, 0. So I'm going to explain exactly what this means. So first of all, this 1, 1, 1, this is a point on the plane. So let's mark that point on the plane. So here we've got x coordinate 1, all the way up there like that. Here we've got y coordinate 1, along there like that. And we need to put z coordinate 1 until we get with the plane. So roughly speaking, the point 1, 1, 1 is there. So I'm just going to delete these guidelines now. There we go. So we've got the point 1, 1, 1 on the plane, which I'm going to label. So there's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now what this is next saying is that we can move in any one of two directions a certain number of steps. So here, number of steps in this direction here, or we can move a certain number of steps in this direction here. So the two directions, if I mark those on the diagram as well, just change the colour to black, get an arrow. So the direction 1 naught naught is a step in the x direction, any step in the x direction. So 1 naught naught, we can step in that direction there. The y direction, naught 1 naught, is that way. So we can do any number of steps we want in that direction. So if we wanted to, starting at the point 1, 1, 1, we could do one step in the x direction, two steps in the x direction, then one step in the y direction. Alternatively, choose a different colour, choose blue this time. We could have done one step in the minus x direction, one step in the y, uh, minus y direction. But all of these points, if we start at 1, 1, 1, all of the points that we end up at travelling a number of steps in these directions will always end up on the plane. So I'm just going to delete that now. So I'll leave the first example on there. So that's taken one step in the x direction, i.e. one step in the direction 1, 0, 0. One step again in the x direction, another step in the direction 1, 0, 0. Then one step in the direction 0, 1, 0. Notice how in both of these coordinates here, there's no z coordinate, so we're not moving off the plane, we're not moving down or up everything stays on that same plane. So that then leads us to give the general formula for the equation of a plane. So we get R equals P, a point, plus lambda, the first direction parallel to the plane, plus mu, a second direction, also that lies on the plane, that's parallel to the plane. And that's basically the equation of a plane. So let's do a quick demonstration of this in autograph. So the first vector that we fill out is the point on the plane. So 1, 3, 2, say. The next one is the first direction. Now, for some reason, autograph doesn't look to have a lambda next to that. But this is the first direction. There should be a lambda there. So let's say the first direction is 1, 2, minus 1. And the second direction that we're allowed to walk in is 2, 1, I don't know, 2, 1, minus 2. Let's see what that plane looks like. There we go. So we'll see that a plane needn't necessarily be parallel to the x, y, or z axis. So let's move on a little bit. Let's take the plane that we've just discussed, the one with equation r equals 1, 3, 2, plus lambda 1, 2, minus 1, plus mu 2, 1, minus 2. Now, there is actually an alternative representation that we can have of the equation of a plane, which is in vector format. So it's r dot n equals some constant c. So r 
just means x, y, z. N is a vector normal to the plane. And C is just a constant that fixes the plane in space. So that's saying any point on the plane can be generated by scalar product with a normal vector to give a constant. So in this case, the normal vector would be the one coming directly out the plane like that. So the normal vector would make a right angle with the plane. So that's coming directly out of the plane. So what we're going to try and do now is convert this format of equation here into this one here. So the two things that we need are the normal to the plane and a constant. Well, the normal to the plane can be easily found by finding the vector product of these two vectors here. The reason is these are in the direction of the plane. These are both parallel to the plane. So if it's perpendicular to both of these, it must be perpendicular to the plane. So step one, when converting between, uh, between this format here and this format here, step one, find the vector product of the two directions. This is the normal to the plane. So let's do it. So we're going to cross product, vector product, 1, 2, minus 1, and 2, 1, minus 2. So 1, 2, minus 1. Vector product with 2, 1, minus minus 2 equals, and in a previous video, the way I like to do this, cover up the first entry and find the determinant of what's left. So 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, minus minus 1. So the first entry is minus 2, minus minus 1, which is minus 3. Then what we're going to do is cover up the middle. But our answer here is going to be negative, so negative whatever we get. So 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Minus minus 2 gives 0. And then do it again, cover up the bottom one. The determinant of that, 1 times 1, take away 2 times 2 is minus 3. So minus 3 equals minus 3 naught minus three now any value parallel to that will work so if we want instead of complicating things by using minus three zero minus three we can just divide all entries by minus three and say that that's just one naught one so a vector parallel to that is one zero one so n equals one zero one but minus three zero three would have worked okay so next we need a point so step two, using a point on the plane, find C. So what we've got here, we've already got the equation, R dot the normal equals C. And we know a point on the plane was 1, 3, 2. So, let R equal 1, 3, 2, which means that 1, 3, 2 dot 101 equals C equals, well, we've got 1 times 1 plus 3 times 0, plus 2 times 1, which is equal to 3. Therefore, the equation of the plane, we've got it now. R dot on uh, 1 
equals three. So there is a third and final way that we can write it out, and that's in Cartesian form. So the equation of a plane can be written in Cartesian form, and that's easily accessible from this representation here. Because r, in this representation, this vector r, as we discussed before, just means x, y, z. So x, y, z dot 1, oh, 1 equals 3. Well, we actually do the dot product. That means that 1x plus no y's plus 1z equals 3. And there is the Cartesian equation just from using this representation here. And the thing to notice is that the coefficients of x, y and z are simply just the components, the respective components of the normal vector. So we've discovered that there's three different ways that the equation of a plane can be written in three dimensions. And we're going to write those down now. We're going to summarize them. So one is a point in two directions. So R equals P plus lambda times one direction we're allowed to walk in, plus mu times another direction we're allowed to walk in. So that's one. A second type is a normal and a constant. So normal and constant. So it's R dot a normal vector equals a constant. And this normal vector here is the cross product of these two directions here. So where N is normal to the plane, i.e. D1 cross D2, where D1 and D2 are the two directions above. We'll eat type 3, which is the Cartesian, where the normal vector, the first component of the normal vector, x, plus the second component of the normal vector, times y, plus the third component of the normal vector, times z, equals c where the normal vector is this one here. So this is the first component of the normal vector, second component of the normal vector, third component of the normal vector, and this C is the same as this one here. So they're the three representations of the equation of a plane that you're expected to be able to use in an exam. Here's my attempt at a 3D drawing of a plane, and the points 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 6, and 4, 1, minus 2. Well, I'm going to call this one point A, this one point B and this one point C. And I'm not really bothered about the accuracy of the diagram, but there's the three points on the plane. I've got A, which in vector form is 1, 2, 1. B, which in vector form 2, 3, 6. And C, 4, minus 1, 2. So what I can get is two direction vectors that lie on the plane. And I can do that simply by subtracting points. So I can get the direction vectors A, B, B, C, or any combination of those that I want. So A, B equals B minus A equals, well, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, and 6 minus 1 equals 1, 1, 5. So that's the direction vector AB. BC is equal to C minus B, which is equal to 4 minus 2, minus 1 minus 3, and 2 minus 6, which is equal to 2 minus 4, minus 4. So they have two direction vectors of the plane. But what I really need to get it in Cartesian form, looking back here, I need the normal vector. So the normal vector, i.e. the one that comes directly out of the plane, like that, 
which makes both a right angle with the two directions on the plane. So that's a right angle there. That's a right angle there. I get by just finding the vector product of the two vectors. So I've got 1, 1, 5, cross, 2, minus 4, minus 4, equals. So as I said before, the way I like to do this, cover up the top component and find the determinant of the remaining entries. So minus 4, minus minus 20, is 16 then the middle one's negative always we always find the negative of the next part so then move that down cover up the middle part and the determinant the remaining the remaining entries so minus 4 minus 10 is minus 14 so minus minus 14 is the middle component and then move it down again cover up the bottom component I get minus 4, minus 2, which is minus 6. So that's equal to 16, 14, minus 6 is the normal. Right, so we've got that. So we now know from our previous work that the vector uh, Cartesian equation must be 16x plus 14y minus 6z equals some constant that we don't know the value of yet but we can easily find it by just subbing in one of the three points that we have so let's do one two one so let x y z equal one two one which implies 16 lots of one plus two lots of 14 take away 6 lots of 1 15 plus 28 take 6 is 38 so we can actually check that answer now in one of the other points so let's use 4 1 minus 2 this time so let x y z equal 4 minus 1 2 so 16 lots of 4 plus 14 lots of minus 1 take 6 lots of 2 equals well 64 take 14 is 50 take 12 is 38 yes we've got the same answer twice so c is indeed 38 therefore just concluding therefore 16x plus 14y take away 6z indeed equals 38. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.